Hey guys, Mamie here with OneJoyousKip.com. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel today. And I am going to be using this Gerda Steiner Designs um, stamp set called Lucky Duck. And I'm also going to be using some paper from Doodlebug. And I also am going to use a piece of pattern paper from Lawn Fawn as well. And I'm going to be doing something fun today, which I like to do, which is stamping my images on some pattern paper. And so I'm going to take a few of these little duckies here and I'm going to be stamping the ones that look like they're well, I, at first I didn't know what I was going to do, so I just kind of stamped several of the ducks, but I ended up deciding to go with the ones that were in the water. And so uh, in order to do that, it had to be the ones without the feet because they need to be in the water kind of swimming like a duck would. But I was able to use one of the ducks that had his hiney showing, and I just took his feet off, and that way it looked like he was still swimming in the water. And so... Um, I'm doing this project uh, for NotTooShabbyShop.com and it's my guest designing month this month of April and if you go by her shop you can get this stamp set and you can use my coupon code JOY10 to get 10% off your order as well. So make sure you go by there and check out everything that she's got because she's got great products. And so I'm taking my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers here and I'm adding a little bit of shading to the ducks and that really helps your images pop as well. I could have added a lot more but I wanted to keep it pretty simple so that anybody could replicate this and it's really fun to use pattern paper. It just gives it just a little bit di something different than the usual coloring it in and it's much faster than having to color in the entire images and it comes out pretty cute just the same. And so like I said just adding a little bit of dimension here with my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers and now I'm using the orange marker to color in their little feet and I'm doing just a little tiny bit of shading just because I can <laughs> And I'm going to cut out all these guys um, right up against the black line. I want to try to save as much of that black line as I can because I am cutting right up against the line. Uh, I'm not leaving a border because the border won't be white. It would be uh, the color of the pattern paper. So usually I always cut these kind right up against the, um, the black line. And when you do that, sometimes you can lose a little bit of the black line. And so an easy remedy for that is um, after you're done stamping everything out, you can take a black marker and run your marker along the outside of each image. And that helps to make your image look finished and makes it look like you cut it out perfectly. So um, I definitely recommend that you do that. It's a very important step whenever you're doing uh, paper piecing, I, I think. And so here I've got all my guys colored up, very simple and ready to go. And I didn't color in his feet there because uh, I am cutting those little feet off to create this project. So like I said, I take that black marker and just go around the outside of the images to finish them off. And here they are ready to go. And I've just got a piece of light blue cardstock here and I'm going to take another piece of pattern paper and this is the one that's by Lawn Fawn by the Perfectly Plaid Rainbow Set. And I'm going to, with this blue pattern paper is what I'm going to be creating the water with. And so I have the Lawn Fawn stitched hillside borders and I'm going to use one of those dies to create the waves. So I'm just going to use a little piece here and I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. Make sure that your cutting line is on top of the stitches that are on the die so that you don't get your stitching the wrong way. And so now I'm going to take a little bit of distress ink and ink blend a little bit of that uh, and that's tumbled glass. I'm going to ink blend a little bit of that onto the pattern paper just to give it a little bit more um, color and dimension, a little bit of shading. And you can skip this step if you want to, but I just really like the finished product when I add a little bit of that ink to the edge here.
And I think that inking looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's what I love about this project. As far as coloring your images, it doesn't have to be perfect and it still comes out really, really cute. And now I'm just kind of lining everybody up to see where I want them to be. And um, I like to put some of the ducks inside the water and a few of them on the outside of the water so that you just get a different look. And you could even add another layer of water if you wanted to. That would look cute as well. But I don't have any foam tape right now, and so I'm laying everything pretty much flat against the cardstock. And I also have this Dynamics die here, and it's like a speech bubble die, but it also looks like a cloud. And so I use this thing a ton. If you don't have this die, it's a really great die or something similar to it. I'm just taking a scrap piece of Bristol cardstock that I have here. You don't have to use Bristol. You can use whatever you have, but that's just what I had sitting on my desk, so I used that. And it creates this cute little stitching. It can be either a speech bubble or it can be a cloud-like bubble, like I said. And I'm also going to do the same thing twice. I'm going to do it with uh, that Bristol, and I do it again with some vellum. And now I have this double stitched rectangle die here and I'm gonna run that double stitched rectangle die over all of my die cut pieces here. That way everything can have the stitching around it. So here I have the stitching now on the landscape or the water and also on the speech bubble. And I'm gonna do the same now with my background piece of cardstock as well as with the um, vellum. I hope everybody's having a really great week so far, and I just wanted to catch you guys up. I have so many videos that I'm working on and trying to get things out that you guys have asked for, so just bear with me if it takes me a little longer. Um, I have a couple of things that I have to take care of first before I can do the extra fun things, and so I uh, try to do my put everything in priority, and um, my spring series is definitely a priority, but I also am promising you very soon to be able to do the extra things that I have talked about before I'd have not forgotten about them. I'm just trying to get around to doing everything at once. So I'm just laying that flat right there on the background and now I'm going to look around and see how the ducks are going to fit on here. And this stamp set is so cute and I just, I stressed about it for like two weeks trying to decide what I would do with all these ducks because I wanted to use as many as I could because they're so cute. But um, I, I kind of am getting burned out on creating scenes and so you might see some different types of cards here c coming up soon because I'm kind of like in a little bit of a rut, you know, how that can happen whenever you're creating a lot. And I'm um, just trying to do things that are different. I don't like to do the same things over and over again. And so um, I'm trying to do something different other than, other than scene cards because I, I, scene cards are easy for me and I definitely want to do things that kind of bring me out of the box a bit. So now I'm taking that little splashy water rings that comes with this little guy that's diving in the water and I cut that out in the original um, pattern paper and then I just stamped that right onto this pattern paper so that it would be the right color. And I showed you guys this glue pen in a haul video and uh, I'm, I was going to let you know how it worked and I think it worked really well. Um, you know, it's it's totally dry now now that I'm doing this voiceover and it worked really really good and it wasn't very messy whatsoever and I liked it so I picked that up at the scrapbook expo and I told you guys I would let you know how the stickiness was and and how it stuck everything together and I really like it and the name of that glue pen let me see here I've got it with me it just called planner glue pen and it's by Prima actually and it's non-toxic acid and xylene free and let me see if there's anything else special about it this clear gel based adhesive adhesive is perfect for all of your paper crafting adhesion needs use it for photos paper mats paper embellishments and more repositionable when wet permanent when dry so there you go uh, I am liking it. Okay, so I've got everything glued down now. 
and it's all looking the way I wanted it to. And now I'm going to pick out a sentiment from the stamp set. This is such a great stamp set. It really is. It has good sentiments on it and it has so many little different things you can use. It has those little cattails and uh, it has a fishy and um, dragonfly and just all kinds of little extra stuff that you can use for an Easter card or a spring card or even a summer card really. And so now I'm putting it in my mini Misty so that I can do, I, I cut the stamp apart, the sentiment stamp apart because I uh, have no issues doing that. And I, so I wanted the quack to be a different color than the rest of the sentiment. And so I just cut that apart, makes it very easy. So I put the entire sentiment down, right? And then I take off the quack part, <laughs> the quack word, and I am using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink to stamp down the first word and the last couple of words and then with the quack I wanted to do that in an orange and so now I take I put it back into place first and I take off the other two stamps and so everything will be positioned perfectly um, when you do it that way so now that I have them cleaned off I can just take those off and I am ready to use my orange crush by um, Hero Arts I think it's called Orange Crush. Let me take another look here. Orange Soda by um, Hero Arts, and I love all of their inks also. I'm just gonna swing the door over on that, and I'm gonna do it twice just to make sure it's nice and dark. And I think this card came out really cute. So now all that we have left to do really is to, um, I'm going to stamp down that little dragonfly and color him in real quick. I just wanted to add a little something extra because there are so many extra little um, images that you can add to your card. So I thought that that little dragonfly would, fly would be a good addition. And then I thought, oh my gosh, it looks like that little ducky can be looking at the dragonfly or trying to get the dragonfly. And so um, I put um, some little dash lines to make it look like the dragonfly is buzzing right in front of the little duck. And so I think that part really turned out really cute and it was uh, 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 just a happy accident, I guess you could call it. So yeah, so my card is almost finished and I'm going to put that on um, another piece of pattern paper and I'm going to use my um, Doodle Bug and this is the Halloween paper pad by Doodle Bug and it just has a nice orange in there and so I'm just going to use that as my background, the matting for the background panel. And I'm going to tape everything down with my Tombow tape runner here. And that basically is going to finish off the card. I'm just going to tape down the panel itself. And thank you guys so much for stopping by. Please like and subscribe to my channel so that you can stay tuned for my series, my spring series. And you can always click on the playlist so you can see the other series that I have um, in the uh, playlist that you might like or you might be inspired by. Um, also, make sure to stop by Jamie's store, nottoshabbyshop.com, and don't forget that coupon code JOY10. Thanks a lot for coming by.